Welcome to the painting desk. So when we get an interesting miniature, whether for Warhammer, Age of Sigmar, or for 40K, sometimes it can be hard to find some inspiration for whatever the painting theme should be. So in this case, I'd like to go look at some historical Japanese paintings and see if they can help us paint one of these Ogroid Thaumaturges. Let's take a look. Now, like a lot of brightly colored schemes, we're going to start this from a zenithal prime. We want to make sure that the top portion of the prime is nice and a bright white, and the underside is as close to a matte black as we can get it. From there, our most prominent color is going to be red. So we're going to undershade using Kerberg Crimson here. And there might be some blue later, so this crimson actually is gonna bring in just a little bit of that. With that undershade down, we're gonna move into a nice bright red using Blood Angels Red. Through the airbrush, this lets us apply plenty of thin layers to really get the vibrancy we're looking for. In this case, we can just go over all of the exposed skin, particularly the parts where white is still showing from our zenithal. And then once we're done, we can just come back and clean up any areas in white that may have gotten a little bit too much red. Now, just like in the painting, it looks like the Oni's mane or hair is a darker shade of brown. So I've gone with Saigor Brown to accomplish this. From there, it's on to the horns and claws hooves and the loincloth on the ogre here and this is going to give it a real nice organic feel while separating the bone on the ogre from the bone on his little staff thing speaking of the staff thing we're going to pick out the wooden bits with wildwood this goes on pretty easily and looks really nice as like a dark wood stain. Then on to those bone details on the staff. Just gonna use some skeleton hoard here. This does really well at getting that sort of multi-hued brown bone look that we want. And don't worry if it catches a little bit of the red that's still lingering on the white. Just gonna help blend it into the overall red theme we've got. For the metallics, I've gone with a pretty simple burnt iron. Figure there might not be a whole lot of gold on this particular ogre. We're also going to apply a matte finish later to really knock the shine down and make it appear worn. To further push the sort of drawn look, I've gone with a black enamel wash as a unifying wash. While this won't sharply outline the whole mini as it would a drawing, it's going to give some of those areas a little bit sharper definition. It's also a great way to make sure that a lot of those little lines get just a little bit of shading. Now the wash comes off pretty simply with a little bit of white spirits or mineral spirits and a makeup sponge. And let us even blend a little bit of that darker wash over some of the broader surfaces. Now I've gone ahead and attached the mini to a base I had prepared for my army earlier just to help it blend in with everything else. 
but there's one last important step, and that's to take care of everything we want to glow, including these tattoos and markings that almost look historically Britain more than they do Japanese. To get the markings started, we're going to line in all of these tattoos and stuff with white and pick out anything that we want to glow. This is just going to end up showing the colors better. I've gone with a white ink in this case because it's going to flow into those recesses nicely. I was not kidding when I said this is a big step. There ended up being a whole lot of markings on this guy. Adding a bit of fluorescent blue over top of this white is going to make those markings really pop. And because the paint is so thin, we don't really have to worry about going too exactly along the lines. Lastly, to really sell that glow, I've added in some Aethermatic Blue. This is a bit of a teal contrast paint, but it's going to add some extra vibrancy to all of that fluorescent that we did before. And there we have it. I really like how this red turned out to help this kind of stand out from what I would consider the standard uh, blue or even the more bestial color schemes of some of the other ogres in the Sigmar range. And ultimately this came together pretty quickly. If you enjoyed this video though, feel free to leave a like down there and maybe even a comment if you've got any questions or have anything that you might be particularly inspired by from other artworks uh, in your painting. And if you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss a video. But as always, and most of all, thank you for watching and happy painting.